Almost everyone on planet Earth has seen the famous images of astronauts standing on the moon. But, often overshadowed by the weight of the historic achievement, the most obvious feature of these photographs is also one of the most critical pieces of equipment in the spaceflight missions. That is their spacesuits. About half a million people worked on NASA's Apollo project, taking an impossible idea and landing humans on the moon. During their journey, the astronauts relied on specialized spacesuits to protect themselves from the harsh conditions of space, and NASA has built on that legacy in its subsequent spacesuit design work. Astronauts have relied on spacesuits to help them work and keep them safe. From the shiny silver of the Mercury suit to the orange pumpkin suits of shuttle crew, spacesuits have served as personal spacecraft, protecting explorers while working on the International Space Station or walking on the moon. Just as NASA has a new spacecraft, new suits will be needed to protect future astronauts as they return to the moon and eventually Mars. Here is the evolution of the space suits from 1935 to 2020. Escafandra Astrantnautica Spain. An early predecessor to the modern space suit, the Herrera space suit was designed by Spanish military engineer Emilio Herrera Liners for an open basket balloon stratospheric flight. The rubberized silk suit featured a three-layered glass panel, a metallic frame, and a closed-circuit heating system. Mercury Space Suit, United States. Initially designed as a suit for U.S. military pilots, the Mercury Space Suit's lightweight and highly mobile design was intended for use in unpressurized high-altitude planes but proved a good starting point for the Mercury Space Project. Like the Navy Mark IV, the Mercury space suit was designed as a safety precaution in case the ship's cabin rapidly depressurized. Before we continue further, be sure to subscribe to our channel, that way you won't miss any of our weekly videos. SK-1 Space Suit, USSR The SK-1 was the first space suit ever used for its intended purpose and to its full capacity. The suit was pressurized and featured a non-detachable visored helmet, a life support system, and an inflatable rubber collar in case of an emergency water landing. The suit was specifically developed for the first man in space, Yuri Gagarin, but was also used in the later Vostok missions. Gemini Space Suit, United States. The Gemini Space Suit's major improvement from the Mercury model was its flexibility. Rather than fabric-type joints, the Gemini model combined neoprene-coated nylon air bladders and a linked net restraint layer, which allowed for more mobility when pressurized. Burkitt Space Suit, USSR. The Burkitt Space Suit improved on its predecessor, the SK-1, with an internal life support system. Rather than employing an external umbilical cord to supply air into the suit, oxygen was circulated through an open-cycle environmental control system between oxygen tanks located in the suit's backpack and the rest of the suit. Yastreb Space Suit, USSR. The Yastreb space suit was the first Russian suit designed specifically for extravehicular activity. As such, the suit was designed to be flexible and lightweight. It had an external pulley system, which provided extra mobility, and a compact life support system in order to easily maneuver around the smaller Soyuz rockets. Apollo A7L space suit, United States. Unlike the Gemini space suit, Apollo space suits were designed for use on the moon. Thus, they were required to sustain livable temperatures in the suit's interior during the hot lunar day and offer protection against jagged rocks. Simultaneously, the suits needed to be flexible so astronauts could grab rock samples from the moon's surface. The Apollo suits featured a protective outer layer, a portable life support backpack with seven hours worth of air, a liquid cooling system, and a helmet fixed on the suit with an external helmet attachment to block out UV rays and keep internal temperatures cool. Crescent 94, USSR. The Crescent 94 was a Russian space suit designed for lunar exploration. To don the suit, astronauts had to enter a hatch connected to the suit's external backpack life support system. Like its American counterpart, the Apollo spacesuit, the Crescent 94 featured protective outlayers, a reflective visor to keep out UV radiation, and an internal cooling system. The suit, however, had the added benefit of no external tubing. Orlin Space Suit Russia. 
Designed in 1971, the Orlin spacesuit is still used for spacewalks and any movement outside of a pressurized space cabin. The suit is composed of a rigid torso and helmet frame and has flexible limbs for increased mobility. Unlike its American counterparts, the Orlin spacesuit has no external hose due to its integrated life support system. EMU Suit, United States. The extravehicular mobility unit is designed to use outside of the pressurized space shuttle cabin. It features 14 layers of material each serving different purposes, ranging from cooling to pressurizing and thermal protection. Unlike all previous spacesuits, the EMU is not custom-fitted to a single person, but rather meant for multiple uses. Sokol Space Suit, USSR The Russian Sokol Space Suit was first designed in 1973 after three astronauts suffocated on Soyuz 11 in 1971. The lightweight space suit, which is still used today, is internally pressurized and has integrated shoes, though the gloves and helmet are removable. Through a system of tubes and electrical cables, the suit can be worn for up to 30 hours in a pressurized environment, or two hours within a vacuum. It was designed not for spacewalks, but for use within the Soyuz rocket during moments of low cabin pressure during the rocket's ascent and descent. Launch Entry Suit, United States. Similar to its Russian counterpart, the bright orange Sokol space suit, the American launch entry suit is intended for exit and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. It was designed with a pressure-sealed visor and helmet collar and an integrated anti-gravity suit to prevent the wearer's blood from pooling in their lower body during re-entry. Axe 5 Hard Shell Space Suit, United States. The Axe 5's rigid design was intended to withstand high levels of air pressure while allowing unrestricted mobility with its rounded joints. Unlike previous extravehicular mobility units, the wearer wasn't required to purge nitrogen from their blood before taking a spacewalk. Though this prototype has never been used in space, many of its features are applied to modern spacesuit designs. Advanced Crew Escape Suit, United States. Similar to its predecessor, the launch entry suit, the advanced crew escape suit is meant to protect crew members in the case of rapid cabin depressurization. The design greatly improves upon that of its predecessor, it's fully pressurized, protects crew members from air contamination, and has an internal liquid cooling system. This suit is still in use today, though materials and technologies have improved since it was first introduced. Fishin EVA Suit China the Fishin EVA suit was reverse-engineered from a Russian Orlin suit sold to China in 2004. Though the design is mostly similar to its Russian counterpart, there are several differences, including the larger visor. The suit is also made from purely Chinese materials and sports Chinese telemetry, digital communications, and data management systems and software. Final Frontier Design IVA Space Suit, United States while its testing is not yet complete, the Final Frontier Design IVA space suit is a lightweight space suit designed for commercial use. The purpose of the suit, besides protecting the wearer from the stresses of space, is to be highly accessible and cost-effective while providing the wearer more mobility than previous suits. Z1 EVA space suit, United States. The Z1 prototype space suit was designed for use in 2014 but as of early 2019, has never been used in space. Designed similarly to the Russian Orlin, the Z1 has a semi-rigid torso with a life support backpack, which covers a hatch inside the suit. The suit's design is intended to maintain stable pressure between the suit and the ship's cabin in order to shorten the pre-breath preparation that older suits required. Such preparations prevented the wearer from developing decompression sickness. The suit utilizes newer materials and provides increased mobility over that of the older EMU. SpaceX Dragon Suit In 2016, Elon Musk hired Hollywood costume designer Jose Fernandez to design a spacesuit for his firm. Fernandez is better known for creating costumes for superheroes in films such as Batman vs. Superman. Musk wanted his suits, like his capsule and launch vehicles, to look like something that had never been seen before. 
These appear sleeker than the Sokol launch and entry suits that astronauts wear for launch on board the Soyuz capsule that has been carrying crews to the ISS for the last nine years. These suits provide added safety to the astronauts during the most dangerous phases of the missions, like when they travel through the Earth's atmosphere, but they are not autonomous. The suits rely on the life support and communications systems of the spacecraft to protect life in the event of a failure of the capsule's primary life support systems. Traditionally these suits have been adaptations of pilots' high-altitude suits that mostly serve the same purpose. Which suit you would like to try? Let us know in the comment section.